second best friend. Sure. This, the this reason is only why to everybody say, can surely, benefit. This is only to say that a busy economy, one in which there's investment and development and so on, is an economy that's a good economy for working people and for everyone else. I think we say that in the AFL-CIO uh, at least once a month, all the time. There's nothing, in which, there's nothing in which we're more interested than having a busy, functioning economy. The question is how to bring that about. I do suggest, and I think, would, would, uh, I think can be defended uh, as long as we want to discuss it, that the prosperity we have in America today, that the labor, movements have made an enor the labor movement has made an enormous contribution to that, and in the absence of the labor movement, and in the absence of minimum wage, this would not be as prosperous a country as it is. Now, hold it that there. Is not to hold say it that there, Lynn. I want to get a reaction to that. He stated the case uh, for what the unions have achieved. Could we go around, first of all, do you accept any part of that? You know, it's preposterous, you know, as I suggested before. I mean, if we, if we, it, you know, if minimum wages can make people richer. The unions we're talking about Well, now. if unions can make people yeah. richer, well, all you have to do is tell people in Bangladesh, why don't you unionize and demand a higher wage? You can be rich like the United States. We're telling them it's everywhere productivity. in the world. It's productivity. told them in Japan. No, it, it, no, it you know, workers Lynn. have higher wages in our country because they're more productive. That's how you get higher wages. And, and this is just plain, I mean, it's nonsense. And why are they more productive? Huh? Because they have capital. Enormous and, capital uh, investment. Another, right. yeah, and the highest wages are paid in the higher the capital intensive industry. And because there are consumers to buy the stuff who have wages which enable them to go into the marketplace and buy something. Without the, without all, the capital investment, they wouldn't have the wages. Money, there there would be, be no way of paying them without the capital investment. That's a Ernest Green, what's the reply? I stand You're by right. my initial statement that it is a, a prerequisite of a democratic society to have trade unions, organizations allowing workers to band together in their mutual interest. And if, if, that, if that group, I'm saying that trade unions uh, like A. Philip Randolph, sleeping car porters, the, the Pullman car company would have never on its own given those workers who worked very hard, yep. were very productive yep. people, well-educated, any increase in their wages had it not been for the intervention of Randolph. The crucial issue is whether governmental measures which have the effect of favoring union organization, of giving them privileges and immunities that are not accorded to other organizations in the society, benefit the society as a whole or harm the society as a whole. The proposition I tried to make in this film was that the source of the prosperity of this country was freedom of enterprise, freedom of employers to hire, of workers to work for whom they wanted to, that insofar as unions had played a role, they had protected some workers at the expense of others and had retarded the prosperity of this country. I think that Lynn Williams' statements to the contrary cannot be supported by any empirical or other evidence that he has, understandably, I'm not blaming him for this, uh, he would be faithless to his job if he did not believe sincerely in what he's saying. I'm not questioning his sincerity, but sincerity is a much overrated virtue in our society. The plain fact is that there is no evidence whatsoever that either unions or minimum wages have made positive contributions to the prosperity of this country. Some unions have. Of course, some unions have done great harm. It's not an, uh, an open and shut picture in which you can make a, a sweeping statement. But on the whole, the growth Why of this country... Make a sweeping the, statement? I do. <laughs> the sweeping statement I make is that the prosperity of this country derives primarily from freedom of enterprise and freedom to hire, to employ, to work, and not from restrictive measures imposed by trade unions. Everybody briefly now, we're in And I would say that the intervention of a strong federal government, who those employers hire, the kinds of protection, uh, the wage standards, uh, health conditions, are the, are the requirement of this government to protect its people because the history of it has shown that that hasn't occurred and in your case, uh, in Spartansburg, South Carolina, again, I argue that the only reason that they can come back now and attract firms from Switzerland and Germany is because, one, that we had a strong government that provided protection for all of its citizens, which didn't occur 15 years Bill ago. Brady. Economic freedom, in my opinion, should not be a bridge. I think that these two gentlemen are advocating that it be a bridge. They're advocating a retention of the minimum wage. They're advocating, I think, that Lynn Williams is advocating a retention of the, of the Davis-Bacon uh, Act. Uh, they, uh, they do not, it seems to me, believe that freedoms are interdependent and indivisible. There are freedoms, there's economic freedom, there's press freedom, there's freedom of, of, of assembly, there's religious freedom. 
And you, you are advocating to me a, a great abridgment of economic freedom. And when you do that, you, you injure the other freedoms that we have. And if you do it enough, as we are doing in this country today, if you do it enough, we are in danger of losing all of our other freedoms. Now we leave this very spirited discussion, and I hope you'll join us again in the next episode of Free to Choose. Next week, Milton Friedman focuses on one of the most disturbing problems in the world today, the problem of inflation. There is a way to deal with it. If you want to find out how to cure inflation, don't miss Free to Choose next week.